In this video, we're going to get started with Groovy. We're going to jump into the IDE. For this course, we'll be using IntelliJ IDEA, and we're going to demonstrate how you can create a Groovy project completely from scratch without even having to install Groovy onto your system itself because it comes with IDEA, how to code something quickly, and then how to debug it so we can step through and see what's going on. So let's jump in. So I'm going to go into IDEA. I'm using IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, which is the free one. There's also the Ultimate Edition as well, which you might be using if you're working in a large organization who has a license for it. But IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, you can just download for free from the JetBrains website. Actually, just before we begin, let's just show you where you can download IntelliJ IDEA from. If I search for IntelliJ IDEA, you can see here we've got the JetBrains.com website, IDEA, and if you just click on that, this takes you to the homepage of IntelliJ, and then you could just click on download. And from here, you just go to the download the community edition, unzip it onto your system, and then just double click the executable, and then you're good to go. So let's just close that. We don't need that anymore. And we'll start by creating a new project. So just click create new project. And you can see here on the left hand side, we have different types of project that we can create in IDEA. And you'll notice that Groovy actually comes as a default. So we're going to choose Groovy and then just click next. And we'll just call it my app and we'll put it on the desktop. So here we have the default project that IntelliJ has created for us. Double click into here and you can see we have a source folder and that source folder is colored in blue, which means it's already made available to IntelliJ Ideas build path and anything inside here is going to be compiled. And it's going to be compiled by the Groovy compiler down into Java bytecode, which can then run on the JVM. So that's a key point about Groovy that's worth understanding. Groovy is a JVM language, which means it runs on the Java virtual machine or specifically the bytecode that's produced from the Groovy compiler, which takes Groovy source code. That's just regular bytecode, which can run on the Java virtual machine. So the set of instructions that it generates the Groovy compiler generates that is, are completely compatible with a Java virtual machine and are equivalent to bytecode that would be generated if you were compiling a Java program. The difference being that the Groovy compiler puts in some extra stuff in there, some transformations effectively, to stitch in some extra stuff to give Groovy the magic and power that it has, which we'll see. But yeah, Groovy and Java are completely interoperable in terms of the actual compiled bytecode that gets run on the JVM. Now, you're probably expecting that you can just add a Groovy class here now. So for example, if I right click here on the source folder and then new, You'll notice I don't have any option to create a Groovy class, I only have Java class. And the reason for this is because we need to add framework support for Groovy. So let's do this now. Let's right click here on the project and then just go to add framework support. And then here you can see Groovy. So if you just click on Groovy and it says there's no library selected and that's true. So we don't have a library here which we've set up. So we can create that and we can just point that to a Groovy installation which we have on our local system. So if I do command shift G then I can go to a folder called .sdkman and inside candidates I have all the different Java frameworks that I've installed on this particular system through this tool called sdkman. So if I just go into Groovy, under here you can see I've got one installation here which is 2.4.13 and underneath here this is a regular installation of Groovy with the bin folder where the binary executables live, the con folder for configuration docs, that kind of thing. So I just select that here, do open and then do OK. And now at this point, it's recognized that it's a Groovy project because we've added framework support for that. So I can now go up to here, down into the source folder. And then you can see here, I've got this new option now, which is Groovy class. So let's just create a Groovy class now, just to make sure it's set up okay. So just click there and I'll just do the ubiquitous hello world. Okay, so this has created our Groovy class here. If we click this button here, which is scroll from source, then what it'll do is it'll open this tree up here to show us exactly where it is. So it's just here, you can see hello world and it's always nice to put a package for things. So we'll just create a quick package. Com, which I'll be easily, demos. And then we'll just refactor that to push that hello world class into that package. Always make sure that you have packages for your classes because sometimes you can run into trouble if you're using the default package uh, because some frameworks don't like that. So here you can see we've got our hello world class. So just pop over here. And we could still have a public static void main method. And we'll just do a print line, hello world. Now this is a valid Groovy program as it is. A few things you can probably see from the outset is the fact that we don't need to use system.out.println. Instead we can just use print line. You'll also notice as well that we don't have any parentheses around the call to print line when we're invoking print line. And that's because in Groovy they're optional. And also you'll know we have single quotes as opposed to double quotes. That's how you can define a regular string in Groovy. 
In fact, if you use double quotes, that's actually a special type of string, which is a thing known as string interpolation, which means you can actually put variables inside the string, and then those variables will be resolved to print their actual values, as we'll see later on. And finally, you'll see that we don't have a semicolon. So semicolons in Groovy are optional, and it's idiomatic Groovy to actually not include semicolons. So now if we just right click here, we have this option here, run hello world.min, click that. And you can see here we've got hello world printed out. Now if we wanted to debug this, same as you would usually debug, just set a breakpoint there, and then right click on main, debug hello world.min. And now you can see here we're actually in the debugger. And you'll see some funny kind of stuff here under static members of hello world. You can ignore that for all intents and purposes. You don't need to know about that. But if you did have any extra variables set within the scope of this method, you'd see them here as usual, as you'd expect. And that's how you create a project from scratch and set it up for debugging in IntelliJ IDEA.